If the overgrown vampire didn't stop staring at her face, even his wicked talent with his sword wouldn't keep his head upon his shoulders. The thought made Mist, an immortal known as the coveted one, grin as she curled up in the window sill of her cell. Leaning against the reinforced bars, she watched the two vampire armies battle below as she might a rumble from the back of bleachers. The poor warlord with his broad shoulders and jet black hair was about to join a legion of other males whose last sight on earth was her smiling face. She frowned when he ducked and ran through his enemy. He was a big male, at least six and a half feet tall, but he was surprisingly fast. Tilting her head, she studied him. He was good. She knew fighting and liked his style. Dirty. He'd cut with his sword, then strike out with his fist, or duck a parry, then throw an elbow. It amused her to watch, but what she wouldn't give to be down there fighting, in the middle, against both sides, against him. She fought dirtier. His gaze continued to stray to her, and once he'd even killed while his eyes were still on her. She'd blown him a kiss, sincerely, choosing to see it as a tribute. He found time to glance back even as he thundered orders and gave commands to the army of vampires around him, showing brilliance in strategy. She examined it all as though watching decisive battles on A&E and grudgingly noted the effectiveness of his army's acid grenades and guns. The creatures of the lore scorned human weapons like these. The only ones such weapons could kill were humans, which was beyond non-sporting. Yet that was the thing about bullets. Aside from ruining perfectly good couture, they hurt and could immobilize an immortal for precious seconds, long enough for a dirty fighter to take your head. Done enough times, they could help take an untakeable castle like Evo the Cruel's. Mist hardly cared that Evo, her jailer and tormentor, was about to have his ass handed to him by this warlord with his forbidden modern weapons. Her situation would not change, for these rebels, turned humans known as the Forbearers, were still vampires. A blood foe is a blood foe is a blood foe. An explosion rocked the castle, and sparks and bits of debris wafted down from the roof of Mist's cell. The low creatures in the dank holds down the corridor howled with impotent fury, increasing in urgency with each successive blast until it was over. Silence, an aftershock here and there, a muted whimper. The defense of this castle was no more, its inhabitants having disappeared by tracing, as the lore called teleporting, leaving no more than an airy draft and the burned records of their horde. She could hear the rebels searching the bowels of this place, but could have told them they wouldn't find any of their enemies. The denizens here had not been a fight-to-the-death sort, more of a he-who-fights-and-runs-away-lives-to-run-away-another-day type. Shortly after, she heard heavy boots on the stone floor of the dungeon and knew it was the warlord. He crossed directly to her cell and stood before it. From her perch, curled in the window, she examined the vampire up close. He had thick, straight black hair that hung over his face in uneven sections, no doubt from where he'd sheared it off with his blade months ago and never thought to cut it since. Some hanks were kept from his field of vision with those small ravel plates like the berserkers used to wear. He had scars on his hands, and his big body was powerful and cut with muscle. She wanted to purr because apparently central casting had just sent down the consummate virile warlord. Come down from there and show yourself. Deep voice, Russian accent, moneyed, aristocratic. Or what? You'll lock me away in a dungeon? I might free you. She was at the bars before he'd had time to lower his gaze from the window. Had his squared jaw slackened just the smallest bit? She listened for a quickening of his heart, but found none because there was no heartbeat whatsoever. So the vampire was single. His eyes were clear of the red haze that marked bloodlust, which meant he had never drunk a being to death. 
but then a forbearer eschewed taking living blood through the flesh altogether. When he saw her face up close, the key wasn't immediately in the lock as it usually would have been, but his lips parted, exposing his fangs for her to see. Of course, his would be sexy, not too prominent or even much longer than a human's canines. When she saw the short, splendid scar that passed down both of his lips, lightning struck just outside, but he didn't flinch at the bolt or even glance up. He was too busy staring back at her. Scars, any external evidence of pain, attracted mist. Pain forged strength. Strength begat electricity. This one could give it to her. It was possible he was even missing an eye under a thick hank of hair. She stifled a throaty growl as her hand shot out to brush his hair back. But he was quick, catching her wrist. She curled one finger in a beckoning gesture, and after a moment he released her, allowing her to reach forward. She brushed his hair back, revealing a hard, plain, masculine face covered with grit and ash from the battle. He was still in possession of both of his eyes, and they were intense, gunmetal gray. When her hand dropped, his brows drew together, perhaps at her blatant interest, or perhaps at her fingers already stroking the bars in invitation as she stared at his mouth. She was surprised by how carnal she found it, especially since the vampire could use it to hurt her. The smooth gold chain that she'd worn at her waist for millennia now felt heavy on her. What are you? he asked in his pleasingly low voice. She realized then that his accent wasn't Russian, but from that of neighboring Esti. The general was Estonian, which made him a kind of Nordic Russian though she was sure he wouldn't appreciate that description. She frowned at his question and pulled back her hair to show him her pointed ear. Nothing? She parted her lips and tapped her tongue against her smaller dormant fangs. No recognition. Apparently the rumors were true. Here was a leader in this army, a general most likely, and he hadn't a clue that she was his mortal enemy. He would think she was fae or a nymph. She'd prefer a fae because she'd cringe to be confused with one of those little hookers. She shook her head. As long as he didn't know she was Valkyrie, it worked for her. Killing the unwitting forebearers would be easy for her and her sisters. Too easy. Like being your own secret Santa. Mist had just confirmed rumors in the lore that whispered of asses and elbows and this horde's inability to differentiate between the two.